Hey guys, welcome back to the Business Owner Spotlight. I am your host, Stephanie Scheller. It is my mission, my journey, my job to bring the best of the best business owners together to share their insight with you. Other business owners out there, other business entrepreneurs who are just getting started, people who have been doing this for a while, because my personal belief is we all have room to grow, we all have room to improve and learn ourselves, and I believe that we need to, need to keep that going and need to share the information that we've all picked up, because the only way we're all going to succeed in business is if we help each other out. So today I have an incredible incredible lady with me. We've sat down once. We had um, just her approach to business is just freaking brilliant. So Shannon, welcome, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So um, I didn't really give away what you do there to our listeners. So why don't we start there? What is it that you guys do and how did you, because you do it a little bit differently. So how did you kind of end up shifting your business model and ending up doing what you guys now do? Um, my husband and I own a CPA firm in San Antonio, and I started doing consulting as a hobby when I still had my full-time job, and uh, the, the thought process behind it was a lot of the large companies have a full accounting team that can really meet you know, any need they have from a uh, budgeting forecast perspective, the actual accounting, tax work, and everything, and so our team has really tried to replicate a full back office um, experience for smaller business owners. So um, most of our clients, they maybe have you know an accounting budget, but instead of just hiring one accountant, they will essentially outsource that full function uh, to us. And so we initially were doing a lot of tax work also, but now we're really focusing on the full outsource model. So we do tax work for our business owners that we work with year round, but we're not specifically a tax CPA firm. So that's really something that I think differentiates us from the other firms in the city. Nice. So when did you decide or how did you decide you wanted to go do this? Yeah, um, it was actually after I had my second child, my husband and I went up to New York for a just kind of a new entrepreneur you know, workshop or something like that. There's an um, online blogger that we follow and really like. And so they had a special event so we took our newborn up there. We went for four or five days and I was so empowered and encouraged by what I heard that on the plane home, it was just like, yeah, I need to, I need to quit. This is what I need to do. And, and honestly, a lot of it was encouragement for my husband. Cause I think that, um, he believed that I could do it before I believed that I could do it. So, um, it was really, it was really great, but that was re really like the moment it was like, yeah, I'm going to quit and do this. I love what you just said there, and I hope our listeners caught that. That was such a huge, a huge lesson that you started the business. You had people around you who believed you could do it before you believed you could do it. Mm -hmm. I think it was scary. Um, you know, I had the steady Eddie, um, the accounting job, and I actually liked my job. I enjoyed who I worked with. I liked what I did. Um, however, I didn't feel like I was having the impact in the world that I wanted. Um, mm -hmm. typically, and I didn't have the autonomy and the freedom to always do things uh, the way that I wanted to do them. And so right. that was really one of the, the benefits was really having the, the freedom to, you know, make my own way. I, I'm a total believer in that. And I, I do believe, you know, if you've got, I realize not everyone is cut out to be an entrepreneur. Not everybody is cut out to go and, and do this life. But if you do feel, you know, that higher calling, you do feel you've got something to go do. I, I, I think it's huge to have the people around you who will support, support you to make that step out. So that's, um, Absolutely. I that's, mean, without my husband being brought into it, I mean, now we have four uh, little kids and it's really a family decision around, you know, our work for us too is part of our, our ministry and we do work as part of your, your calling, like you said. And so it doesn't have to be separate. Like that's part of who we are as a family is trying to help business owners like through, through our business and what we do. And uh, it's really, it can be our whole family that's a part of it. Whereas I think the historical model is much where your day job is so separate from your personal life and it's all kind of seg you know, segregated out. And so for us, you know, who we are is who we are and who we are as a business owner and a mom or a wife, like it's all, it's all related. And so for me, that's been really freeing because I feel like I can just embrace kind of who I am and what I feel like I'm called to do. Um, I like that. I'm, I'm taking notes over here. Um, 
which by the way, for our listeners, you should totally be taking notes on this too. I have a notebook. I've been taking notes on all these business owner spotlights in the same notebooks that I can go back. And, you know, our ultimate goal is to do enough of these that we can turn it into a book. Um, but, but, I mean, these are these are gems like that's fantastic people always try and talk about how you need to be able to separate business and work and you know to an extent if you if you struggle with work yeah you've got to be able to separate it and have that space but but you're not going to be able to completely separate it I know people who are like well you know Stephanie just build out a brand for my company and I'm like I can't do that your brand needs to represent who you are because you are the business right now so, you know, we need to take that piece of you that's made you successful and infuse it. And if you want me to just go make something up, I can, but I can't guarantee it's going to actually help you be successful. It's got to be, you know, you're what made this successful. You're what made this work. Yeah, I think that um, to camp on it a little longer. So my husband and I, it's a lot to do with our faith. So us specifically, we're Christians, but I think it, it goes to all faiths and all walks of life and the fact that Every single person, in my opinion, has their own gifting and their own abilities and things they're good at. And so if you're not able to embrace that and make it a part of your family, what you do, I mean, you're really missing out. Like everyone has something special they can offer to the world. And so right. whether that's partnering with another entrepreneur to further a mission you believe in. But um, I think part of this too, the younger generation that's coming up uh, in the workforce now, it's like they want a mission-driven business that is about doing work in the community and things like that. And so, yeah. I think it's important that we take that seriously. You know, what's the calling that I have on my heart and get the courage to go embrace it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that I do want to ask, I'm curious as you've been building this and I know you guys have gone through the high moments, the low moments, the all the in between, what's probably been the hardest part. Was it finding this, this piece of you of, Hey, embrace who you are. Was it that, or was there, was there ever a moment when you were like, Oh my gosh, I can't do this anymore. Probably a few things that jump out. Um, I think we grew too fast our first few years, probably, um, which is a good thing. I think as a business owner, it's difficult to turn down revenue and work when you're not really ready for it. And so we pushed, I think, to take on more work than what we could realistically um, deliver on the way we wanted. And so that's probably one crucial area. And so now, even my own clients, it's like, if you have more work and you know what to do with, you need to raise prices because you have to, it just wasn't sustainable. And we had a hard time hiring and training well enough. So a lot of our you know, employees work got thrown into the fire because we had too much work and we couldn't stay on it. So I think we would have grown more systematically. Um, so as far as the season for our business, that was a struggle. For me personally, um, I have struggled with, the balance between all the different things in my life that need to get done. And I think as a business owner, there's, you know, a thousand things that need to happen for business to run. And they're kind of always in the back of your head, you know, like, Oh, I need to deal with this vendor. And I need to call this client. And I have, you know, 50 emails I haven't responded to and, and that kind of thing. And so I think just on a personal level, staying ahead of it has been tough for me and then learning how to delegate effectively. Um, mm. so personal, like kind of control free, <laughs> issue that I'm <laughs> you know because you have to delegate and you have to you know embrace people around and we're just now the firm really getting around you know the different hats in the organization and who's going to wear those hats because it can't all be the owner and frankly it's not healthy um no and I can't do everything the best in my business like I hire people that are better than me at things and so let's leverage that the best we can you know yeah, well, and the whole the whole reason you exist is because of business owners who think like you. Let me hire someone who's better than me, who's smarter than me in this area. I don't have to be the end all be all for everything. And so the challenge is this is where you know Matt laughs at me because he's like, you tell your clients to do everything. You know what you need to do, Steph. I'm like, yeah, thanks. Stop talking now. <laughs> but it's so true. But doing it is so much harder though, and and so we talked through like in an organization, for example, you have a operations hat, a sales hat, administration, and then finance. And so we're like, so there's really four major functions, right, in a business. And most of our owners that we talk to, they're still wearing all four. It's like they're over ops, they're over sales, they're over all the administration, you know, contracts and all that stuff. And then um, finance, they're like trying to manage all of it. And so we try to work through, okay, like who can wear those hats? So yeah. 
me, I'm having to say, okay, I need to have someone over operations and wear some of these other hats because basically I end up wearing all of them very poorly. And uh, yeah. yeah. So I think that's a struggle. I think that when you get to a certain size, that's a natural progression, but you have to have a plan to get out from under it or, you know, it's just not a sustainable, sustainable model. And I want to actually point out, I'm afraid some of our listeners might, um, might think like you said something earlier that really resonated with me. You said, I was trying to do everything and that's not healthy. And I think some, some of our listeners, depending on where they're at, will think of that like, Oh, it's not healthy for me physically or me personally, or, Oh, it's not healthy just for the business. But the truth is it's not healthy for either. It will kill you physically. And it will also drastically limit the growth you can do in your business. If you insist on, you know, holding your finger tightly shut. You can't hold as much if you close your fist. Absolutely. And, you know, we talk through, even with like a giving, we talk about a concept of abundance. So, we, you know, there is so much business out there and like just to have a spirit of generosity and abundance and, you know, there's so much work um, in the community. And so we try and, and do business that way. And yeah. you don't have to clench everything. Like your business won't grow. So yeah, things won't come out, but things won't grow in either. And, right. But then you get into hiring, <laughs> you know, like you have to have a hiring process that you stick to. So now we have literally like six or seven steps where it's like, these are all the things that have to happen before we make anyone an offer. And we hire very slowly at the beginning. It's like, Oh, like you said, you know, accounting, like, cool. You know, here's a job offer. Let's see how you do. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Almost a full turnover. And we have some really wonderful people, but you know, looking back, I didn't set them up to be successful. I didn't set the expectations around, you know, what they need to be doing. And so now we are much more careful when we hire because you yeah. can't delegate if you don't have the right people. So it's kind of that chicken and egg because a lot of owners is like, well, I can't delegate. It's too much. And my team can't handle it. Well, who's responsible for hiring and training that team, right? Yeah. You can say that your time and effort should be drastically focused on training and equipping your team. So that you can pass as much off as possible. Yeah. Um, it takes time, which nobody has enough of, you know? But. No, I totally agree. I, and that's where a lot of the struggle comes in for a lot of these guys where they wait to hire until they have no time to train properly. Oh, and I'm like, you know, the thing is this, as a business owner, it's, it's part of your job description to take a pay cut and to take cuts and to invest in your company. And if you insist on continuing to take out your $100,000 salary and not spending 30,000, 40,000 of it to hire a really good person, you know, because you're like, well, it's my business and I should be getting paid more. Yeah. Down the road. Right. But we need to, just, I, I, I tell people hiring is either the best decision you're ever going to make if you do it right, or it will be the worst decision you'll ever make for your business every time. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that makes or break you. I mean, your assets really your people that you hire, and especially because we're a service company. I mean, our whole business is around, you know, accounting and, and offering service for clients. So if we get it wrong, I mean, it, it's huge. Um, yeah. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> experience. I've gotten it wrong before, you know, like it has happened. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't say this because I figured it all out either, because I think that it's a journey, that's for sure. That is true. Well, I am glancing at the time and we're coming up on 15 minutes already, which is crazy. Um, it's, it kills me how fast every time I could, I feel like I could just sit and chat forever, but I always like to end with this question because I always feel like it's the best question you could ask because if you ask, you know, Mark Cuban or this person or that person, you know, what's your best piece of advice of business advice? You know, Mark Cuban says, don't take a loan to go into business, right? Well, he's sitting on freaking Shark Tank, you know, loaning people out of money. So it's hard to connect with that, but you're in the midst of it. You're running, you're building. What's your best piece of advice for other business owners? Um, my husband and I talk about um, our mantra kind of at the beginning. We had this, uh, we just said, burn the boats. And so he actually even wrote a blog about it one time, but um, it's like, if you're thinking about doing it at some point, you just have to go for it. So that's, you know, you have to get in the boat, you have to get out to that island, and you just have to burn the boat. Like, this is this is what I'm doing. So it's not super profound, but I just want to encourage people, if you're thinking about starting a business, or you feel like you're being called to start a business, to, to take that seriously and really just go for it. Like, come up with a plan and do it. Um, yeah. Life's too short to play it safe. And, and I feel like you know... If you have that tug on your heart that like your 
you're supposed to do it. I, I've had so many people in my office. It's like, well, I'm just being afraid. And what if, I, what if it doesn't work out? And what if this? And I'm like, you could always go find a job if it doesn't work out. Like, yeah. you're not going to know if you don't try. And so um, we were just like, go for it. And, you know, burn the boat. I love that. And I think there's, it's something I talk about a lot. It always makes me smile, right? Because you and I talk, we say different words, but we say a lot of the same stuff. And I talk about the same thing, right? There's no plan B because as long as there's a plan B, you won't commit fully to plan A. Absolutely. Absolutely. You just have to go for it. It's like, this is what we're doing. And you know, I'm going to, and there's times where you have to pivot. So it's not that you should go in a certain direction and never. Yeah. Approach. There's pivots but you still are all in. You just got to go for it. Yeah. Well, and I think that's, you know, and this will be the last thing because I want to wrap up, but I think we do the same thing if you're already in business too, you know, we're doing this big retreat in January and we kind of did the same thing. I signed, it was like, okay, once I signed these contracts, there's no, that was my burn the boat, right? So the contracts are all signed. The bills are coming at the end of the year, whether or not I've sold out the retreat. And it's what it's done is it's pushed me way outside of my comfort zone and we have had huge growth and it's been freaking phenomenal. So I think even if you're in business and you're faced with this incredible opportunity, like go for it. I, I love that because I feel like it's applicable. It doesn't matter where you're at in your business. Burn the boat. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking time. I know you're crazy busy. So thank you for taking time to sit down with me today. I had a great time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. So for our listeners out there, this is the business owner spotlight. I always say it like that because I feel like I get so much out of these every time. And I live and breathe this stuff. I mean, this is my whole life is, is learning about how to do better at business. And I learn every time. And I want to find the people that you know, who are good to bring this kind of value, who have experience, who deserve to have the spotlight put on them for just 15, 20 minutes, get the chance to share what they know because we all know something. The question is, are we ever going to get the chance to put it out there? So thank you guys. We will see you next time.